As long as there have been buildings, there has been the need to evacuate building occupants during emergencies. Generally, fire has been a major cause of such evacuations. And for most of history, stairs have been the only way to either enter or escape from buildings. But in the mid-19th century, Elisha Otis's engineering marvel, the elevator safety brake, revolutionized building design. It enabled safe and reliable access to spaces previously reachable only through laboriously climbing and descending stairs. Otis's invention made tall buildings viable and thus expanded the ability of builders and architects to use vertical space. Now they could plan high-rise buildings knowing that floors high above the ground could easily be reached. The skyscraper was born. Despite the familiarity with and the success of elevators in accessing the upper floors of tall buildings during a fire emergency, elevators have long been declared off-limits for evacuation and stairs have been designated the only means of egress. As the result of one of the most successful public education campaigns ever, this rule has been rigorously followed. We've been told via signage for years and years not to use the elevators during an emergency and instead to use the stairs. In the past there were several hazards that made elevators dangerous to use. First off was the heat and so it was calling the elevators actually to the fire floor. The second was the smoke in that if the elevators were called to the fire floor there were people exposed in the elevator cars to the toxins that were in smoke that would actually could potentially cause incapacitation or even death. And also if there was water in the elevator hoistways, that could cause the elevator equipment to short out. Fire and other equally dangerous hazards are why elevators were to be avoided in an emergency. But engineers, architects, fire service personnel and others have come together to address these concerns. In the near future, elevators may be used to evacuate occupants from a building and fire service elevators universally employed to quickly carry firefighters to staging areas, thus enhancing their ability to rapidly suppress a fire as well as conduct search and rescue. Recent changes in building codes and standards from the International Code Council, National Fire Protection Association, and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers allow new buildings to incorporate advanced elevator and construction technology which will allow, in specially designed buildings, elevators to be used for safe and rapid evacuation during a fire emergency. While available to all occupants, these engineered elevator systems can be especially helpful in providing injured or mobility impaired people an opportunity for egress equal to the opportunity of those able to use stairs. It's a whole new way of thinking about building egress. A significant component of the new elevator system is the elevator lobby, which will have fire rated partitions and doors to keep harmful smoke out of the area in which occupants await an elevator. The people who are waiting at the elevator lobby will have direct access to a stairwell to use in the event that the elevators are taken out of service and can no longer be used for evacuation. The other is providing two-way communication for the occupants waiting at the elevator lobby that they can have direct communication with the fire command center. New elevator lobby signage, direct access to stairwells from the elevator lobby, elevator lobbies and shafts that are protected from heat and smoke, Priority elevator service from the fire floor to the main lobby. Water kept away from the elevator components. And two-way communication between the lobby and fire command center. These improvements and others combine to make elevators an effective way to evacuate all occupants of a building in an emergency. But if a new generation of elevators and new safety provisions can be effective in rapidly and safely getting occupants out of high-rise buildings in a fire emergency, they will be equally instrumental in helping fire service personnel overcome one of the obstacles that have made their jobs so difficult. Fully equipped, typical firefighters carry 50 to 80 pounds of equipment when arriving to battle a high-rise building fire. Then, to get to the blaze if there is no fire service elevator, 
They have to climb exhausting flights of stairs, often many flights, carrying that equipment. The vertical travel time is tremendous, so it delays the time in getting to the fire if you have to use the stairwell. And the physical exertion of, of course, carrying that extra weight is tremendous and, and has a huge impact on the ability of the crews to fight the fire uh, once they arrive on the floor. Besides having to expend enormous energy just reaching the fire, there is also the potential lost time climbing upstairs when occupants are coming down. An elevator reserved for firefighter use eliminates or minimizes these problems. Having a dedicated elevator that would not be used by occupants that are trying to leave the building gives us an opportunity to get to the seat of the fire quicker and make the fire attack. The ability to make a successful fire attack will be profoundly enhanced by the following elements. Ability to continuously monitor at the fire command center the floor location of each occupant evacuation elevator and other pertinent elevator data. Elevator lobbies and shafts protected from heat and smoke. Elevators sized to accommodate stretchers. Direct access from elevator lobbies to stairwells with standpipe connection. Standby power and access hatches for fire service self-escape. Ultimately, creating an environment as safe as possible to ascend and descend a building in a fire emergency is what it's all about. Advanced technology, new safety provisions, continuing research into human movement and behavior during fires, as well as other emergencies, have provided the basis for a redefinition of state-of-the-art egress strategies for high-rise buildings. These new elevator technologies may take several years before they are found in new buildings, but the worldwide transformation has already begun. But buildings equipped with it will ensure equal egress opportunity for all occupants and ensure that firefighters will have more rapid response capabilities. In either case, it is incumbent on all to make an extra effort to know and understand the emergency plan for the buildings we live in, work in, and visit. Special signs and emergency instructions will help make certain that everyone knows the safest way out if and when a building emergency happens. The time is right to learn about and consider these life-saving 21st century strategies. The whole point of occupant evacuation elevators is to save lives. We want people to evacuate the building, especially in a full evacuation, safely and efficiently and effectively in the fastest way we can get them out of the building.